to repeal Bill 23 and protect the Greenbelt Rally. One of many taking place during the days of action across Ontario. Bill 23 and others are quickly rolling out from the provincial government and the opposition across Ontario is significant in size and unity across political stripes. We stand united against Bill 23. This morning, our rally will be brief but mighty. In a couple of moments, we will hear from City Councillor Phil Alt, MPP Mike Schreiner, and Wellington Watcher, Wellington Watcher, oh goodness gracious, Wellington Water Watcher Executive Director Arlene Slocum. <laughs> Then we will do a brief walk to City Hall to give a shout out to folks in the, in the city of Guelph. We will be serenaded by Oprah's Sound of the Drum and <laughs> we will end our walk at City Hall. Please walk on the sidewalks. Okay, just so you know, we have some volunteers in the crowd who will remind folks to look out for traffic and stay safe. Safety folks, can you wave at the crowd? And, as a special treat for Premier Ford, r4dsmedia.ca, a local company owned by Renan Dehan, will take a drone photo of our rally from above. Thanks to this generous donation from r4dmedia.ca. After the speeches, we will do a countdown to wave at the camera. Now, I call on Arlene Slocum to do a land acknowledgement. I can help. Thank you. Wow, it's incredible to see so many people here. And as we gather here to talk about this collective affront to our rights, it's also really, really important and essential that we talk about our responsibilities. And all of us here are treaty people with a great deal of responsibilities. Um, here we are in Dish with One Spoon territory, and the Dish with One Spoon is a covenant to which we are bound. The Dish with One Spoon covenant talks about this beautiful lands between these great lakes being full of bounty, enough for all, but that it's our responsibility to only take what we need, not more. It's our responsibility to leave the dish clean for future generations. Everything about this bill is an affront to that particular covenant. And we have a responsibility to make sure that we are really taking seriously, um, you know, the pieces of this covenant that we are bound to and calling on and speaking truth to power in this situation. Here in this river valley in particular has a long and storied history of the original peoples. Um, over generations, this was many, many, many generations. This was an Anishinaabeg people peopled this territory along with the Haudenosaunee people and also the Huron-Wendat people. And in this particular river valley, just a little east upriver from here, a 10,000-year-old settlement of the Chonaton people and the Attawandaran people were here for many, many, many generations. And currently we are part of Treaty 3 with the Mississauga of the Credit. And that's the treaty that we are particularly bound to. And everything, like I said, everything about this particular bill and many others has not only uh, been an affront to us and our, our rights, but to the rights of the original and on, ongoing and enduring stewards of these lands. And I think it's really incredible that, you know, we can come together in masses, which we're seeing all over the place, to, to take seriously our, our responsibilities in this case, speak truth to, ta to power, and to make sure that we are connecting dots between issues and understanding that this issue here particularly is also a, a treaty rights violation and that we need to speak about that as well. So here we are in these beautiful lands, treaty territory of the Mississauga of the Credit, 
standing up to our collective responsibilities. Thanks for joining us here. And now, Councillor Phil Alt. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be speaking here along with Arlene, Mike, and with our great moderator, Tanya. Miigwech, I would like to acknowledge that we are gathered in a meeting place of time immemorial for Indigenous brothers and sisters. It is a place of peace, gathering, and prospering. Look around you. This is community working to make a difference. And I'm going to say my first controversial remark, and it might sound heretical. Yeah! Thank you, Doug Ford. <laughs> Thank you for warning us about Pierre Polivier. Thank you for letting us know that the promises from you are not promises. Your promises are words meant to seduce people to political slumber. Premier Ford, I ask you for just one thing for Christmas. Please repeal Bills 109, 23, and 39, just like you repealed the repugnant Bill 28 short weeks ago. Would you please admit that the massive property tax increases people can expect shortly are your fault and will inflate housing costs, not bring them down? <laughs> Mr. Ford, I want to thank you. You expected us to be complacent, to be blinded by pretty words about mythological cheaper housing, about adding to the green belt while actually taking away from it. I want to thank you for uniting people in support of a greener future. You expected us to be divided while you ruled with the notwithstanding clause. Your cabinet ministers, particular Minister Lecce, dumped on unions negotiating for low paid workers. You tried to tell Ontario that free collective bargaining was a thing of the past and Ontario said no way. <laughs> We heard from you that strong mayors are better than democracy. Let me straight state this without equivocation. Strong premiers, strong men don't matter more than democracy and affordable housing is never going to be built as the green belt is gutted. That is a bold faced lie. Every year, my lovely and very patient wife Elizabeth ask what I wish for Christmas. And each year I ask for world peace. I can't think of anything I would rather have. This year, however, I'm changing up a bit, and this has nothing to do with the World Cup. I know that my letter to Santa has already been answered. I ask for people to be united in upset and anger. I ask for the public to be motivated for political change and for democracy. It might take voting, it might take working for a candidate clearly committed to housing, to better health care, to the green belt. It might tempt some of you to peaceful civil disobedience, and I stress peaceful. Protests are of the day. Tirelessly calling upon your MPs to resist tearing down democracy is something that we need because we cherish democracy. <laughs> Folks, we don't need strong mayors as Bill 39 states. Democracy serves us well. Clearly, look around you. You are democracy. It is a, a bill that will ensure that mayors with only one-third minority vote can implement so-called provincial priorities, an insult to the parliamentary tradition. It is also deliberately vague. What is a provincial priority? Is it gutting health care? Is it giving land to developers that was once promised to our grandkids as their environmental heritage? Is it Highway 13? Is it a promise to build a water pipeline from Lake Erie when we deplete our ground source water? Why do you think Water Watchers is here today? This isn't just about a green belt. This isn't just about affordable housing. This is about our future and our kids' and our grandkids' future, and without water, there is none. Private interests cannot come at the expense of public needs and assets, whether it's the green belt, labor rights, health care, or education. I don't care if you are green, as is Mike Schreiner, NDP as am I, liberal as some of you are, or conservative. 
I know people through, see through the anti-union laws of this government, the false anti-poverty housing promises of this government, the dangerous use of the notwithstanding clause in our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. I know people oppose the concept of strong mayors that is in direct opposition to democracy. I know people do not agree with the notwithstanding clause or it to be used to gut collective bargaining or to get governments out of its financial obligations imposed by courts and contracts. People I know believe democracy works. I know democracy works, you know democracy works, and that it matters to all of us. I know I can rely upon my MP Mike Schreiner to stand up for democracy. Even if Mike and I are from different political affiliations, we are united in a love for democracy. Let's get out and work between elections for community, for environment, for truly affordable housing, for decent wages, for a green belt that is not gutted for unaffordable housing. Let's use Bill 23, Bill 109, Bill 39, the strong mayor's legislation to join in positive action for our kids and grandkids. Namaste, wa salam alaikum, migwich, and a very, very Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Alt. And now, our MPP, Mike Schreiner. Let's hear it for people power! This is people power! The only thing that's going to stop Doug Ford, and I say, Doug Ford, keep your green belt promise, keep your hands off the people's green belt. This is our green belt. It's not the green belt of Doug Ford's developer friends. It is our green belt. It's our children's green belt. It's the green belt for the next seven generations. And people power is what is going to force Doug Ford to take his hands off our green belt. I think we all need to acknowledge what Steve Clark, the housing minister, admitted on Monday when they passed this bill that they failed to consult with indigenous peoples. And he acknowledged that and said they would. But I don't know what's anything to do with free informed prior consent that you would say you're going to consult after you pass the bill. Like what kind of consultation is that? I want to be very clear. This bill has nothing to do with affordable housing. This bill is about five or six people turning millions into billions. Who loans somebody a hundred million dollars at 21 percent interest if they are not tipped off that they're going to be able to develop land that's not supposed to be developed? Shame. That's exactly why I've asked the Integrity Commissioner to investigate what stinks about this deal. And we know, we know, I mean, just check out the bills I've put forward, 44 and 45, that actually build homes that are affordable for people in the communities they want to live, near where they want to work, not paving over the farmland that feeds us, not paving over the wetlands and the conservation areas that clean our drinking water and protect us from flooding, and not paving over the places we just love to spend with our families. And so yesterday... Yesterday I was in Toronto, there were thousands of people marching on Queen's Park. And people were carrying reused signs from Bill 66. Do you remember Bill 66 back in 2018? Which was the first time Doug Ford tried to open the Greenbelt for development. And we the people pushed back. And he backtracked. And so that's what it's going to take this time. And so I'm saying don't give up. Let's continue to push for the repeal of Bill 23. The Premier just backtracked on taking a chainsaw to the charter rights of the lowest paid education workers in this province. We can get him to backtrack on protecting the places we love. So 
So I want to say there is a rally in Guelph today. You're welcome to meet me at 1 o'clock in Alora today. We're going to happy to be in Eden Mills at 3 o'clock today. And I would say keep the pressure on conservative MPPs. They're feeling the heat. They know what they're doing is wrong. They know it's wrong. I was at a rally in Georgetown, and somebody came up to me and said, I'm a lifelong conservative voter. And I'm telling the conservative party they forgot the word conserve is in conservative. And so we're going to keep marching. We're going to keep fighting. I'm going to be your voice at Queens Park, but I need you to amplify my voice. I'm going to continue to work with the NDP and the Liberals, and we're going to have a united front against this bill, against the attacks on our democracy. Again, we don't need to destroy democracy, destroy environmental protections, pave over farmland and wetlands and the places we love to build housing. So let's say yes in my backyard to housing our neighbors in affordable communities and no, no to letting developers cash in by paving over our greenbelt. So let's keep speaking out, don't give up, and let's get marching to City Hall. Thank you, MPP Mike Schreiner. And now, Arlene Slocum from Wellington Water Watchers. Thank you. Um, I had shared some words earlier this week, but I'm feeling they ring so true for me still, so I'm going to just share those again. Um, I just want to, I just want to, you know, as I look around and I see all of you, and as I watch the news cycles these this week and over this weekend, I just want to share how incredibly inspired I am by the many examples that we've seen in recent weeks of people coming together across differences to oppose the reckless attacks of this Ford government. We can fully and clearly see this government is willing to undermine the will of the people and the will and will relentlessly cater to its own self-interested ideology. But despite the fact that the Ontario government passed Bill 23, this fight is not over. Despite the fact that the Ford government has shown itself to be willing to undermine some of the foundations that have benefited all of us, health care, education, labor strength, and environmental stewardship, we will not be stopped. Despite the fact that this omnibus bill was passed without consultation, let alone the consent of First Nations communities across these treaty lands, our collective efforts will not be dying out anytime soon. The power and unity shown around the region and the province as well is a clear sign that we are creating a movement that will overcome these challenges. We are a strong and caring and capable people who have a lot of power when working together to build a future that is meant for all of us. We will continue to organize and to use the many tools that we have at our disposal. We will continue to build connections across issues and see the strength we have when we work together for the long term. And we will remember all those who led with the people and with the earth in mind. And we will also remember those who led with self-interested motivations and from their deep pockets. We will not be stopped. Thank you, speakers, for your hard work on these issues. Thanks to all those volunteering and working hard to stop Bill 23. And thank you to the councillors of, of the city who are here today. Thank you all for coming. Remember to stay in touch, donate, and volunteer through greenbeltpromise.ca. Now, before we begin our walk, let's take a group shot for Mr. Ford. On the count of five, can everyone look up and shout, we stand united. 
Five, four, three, two, one. We stand united. Okay.